figure out why the Minecraft Creeper is such a blast. Lame pun is lame. But where do we begin? Well, obviously, their electrode-like ability to self-destruct in a blaze of glory. In other words, spontaneously combust. But I thought this was supposed to be a show based on scientific theory. Quit your grumbling moblin from the first Legend of Zelda, we'll get there. The first documented account of spontaneous human combustion, or SHC, dates all the way back to the 1400s with an Italian knight named Polonus Vorstius, and a wine-fueled evening filled with women. But the phenomenon really started to gain momentum in the 19th century, after Charles Dickens used it to kill off one of his characters in the novel Bleak House. In other words, yes. Many of the reports of SHC come from less scientific eras where tapeworms were used for diets, dog poop was a throat lozenge, and vibrators cured female hysteria, but reports of the phenomenon have occurred as recently as September of 2011. And regardless of whether we're talking about the era where ketchup was a cure-all, or the one where drinking liquid silver cures us from our blues by literally making making us blue, bizarrely enough, SHC reports across the ages always share eerie similarities. 1. Most victims are chronic alcoholics. 2. The hands and feet usually escape with little to no damage. 3. The combustion of the body leaves a greasy residue and an offensive odor. And 4. The combustion causes very little damage to things around the body. Spooky, right? Well, science has explained where basically the body acts like an inside-out candle. You know how a candle is comprised of a wick on the inside surrounded by a wax made of flammable fatty acid on the outside? The wax ignites the wick and keeps it burning. Well, in the human body, the body fat acts as the flammable substance and the victim's clothing or hair acts as the wick. Scientists say that this is why the victim's bodies are destroyed, yet the surroundings are barely burned. The feet and hands get left intact thanks to the temperature gradient that gets created Kind of like when you flip a match over and it goes out, because the bottom of the match is cooler than the top. So basically, spontaneous human combustion turns you into the world's worst scented candle, burning human stench flavored. Mm-hmm. Really makes the place feel homey. Not gonna see that one anytime soon on the shelves of Bed Bath & Beyond. Anyway, applying wick theory to creepers, point two is moot since, look ma, no hands! We have no way to tell if a creeper is a raging alcoholic to support point one, and until Hans Loeb's smell vision really starts to gain some popularity, I won't be able to know if the creeper smells like the worst Glade plug-in in existence, rendering point three useless. But it's point four here that really makes the difference. A human randomly erupts into flames and nothing gets damaged? Well, that seems to conclusively eliminate wick theory and spontaneous combustion as a possible cause of the creeper outburst, since that exploding creature just took out a huge chunk of my Minecraft McMansion. But there's something else we know about the creeper that we can use. They're green. Sure, they may be mobile and look humanoid, but maybe creepers are actually plants and not animals. After some research, I stumbled across Pete. And Pete, <laughs> Pete and Pete, anyone else remember that awesome show on Nickelodeon? No? Artie, strongest man in the world? Nothing? All right, anyway, too old. Pete seems to explain all the core behaviors of a creeper, also known as phagnum. It's a type of green and black moss that would explain the creeper's coloration. Does it explode? You bet it does. To spread its spores. As with most mosses, sphagnum disperses spores through the wind. To accomplish this, the capsule holding the spores builds up air pressure before rupturing and launching the spores high into the air. It's a method that's very similar to a pop gun, air being squeezed into a tight space before erupting all at once. Hissing sound, anyone, as little pockets of air slowly leak through the capsule just before the time of explosion? And even though this moss is one of the most primitive plant forms on Earth, it has one of the most sophisticated methods of launching these spores. It creates a vortex ring, kind of like a smoke ring or mushroom cloud from a nuclear explosion. This vortex ring allows Pete to launch its spores at an incredible speed for such a small plant, discharging spores at up to 65 miles per hour, 29 meters per second, in less than a thousandth of a second. 
that, loyal theorists, is some fast discharge. Especially when considering that this plant is only a couple centimeters high. Now scale that up 30 times to creeper size, which is roughly 3 meters, and you have an explosion going from 0 to 1,950 miles per hour in a fraction of a second. And I don't know about you, but I'm not too eager to have discharge flying at my face that fast. Well, actually, come to think of it, I'm not too excited to have any sort of discharge headed straight to my face, ever, really. Discharge? That's just a gross word. Regardless, 0 to 2,000 miles per hour in a fraction of a second? That's the level of acceleration able to do some real damage. Suck on that, bullet bill. And not only does the color and explosive power match, its other properties fit with the behavior of a creeper as well. Take, for instance, the charged creeper. In Minecraft, a creeper becomes charged with electricity whenever lightning strikes within three or four blocks. In increasing its explosive power. Well, according to the article Carbon Nanosheet Frameworks derived from peat moss as high-performance sodium ion battery anodes, a real page-turner that one, let me tell you, peat moss has the perfect electrochemical properties to create a battery. They even go so far to say that peat has, quote, some of the most attractive electrochemical properties, end quote. Now, peat moss, I'm happy for ya, I'm gonna let ya finish, but the Chilean pine has probably some of the best electrochemical properties of all time. Seriously though, we have a plant that explodes and can harness the power of electricity. We're doing pretty good. Additionally, creepers drop a lot of gunpowder. Gunpowder is partly made from charcoal and sulfur. During the formation of peat, a type of sulfur known as coal sulfur is created, one half of our formula. Charcoal, meanwhile, is really just a source of fuel that's a lump of pure carbon mixed with dried ashes of plants and animals. Peat is actually one of the world's biggest storehouses of carbon. Consider this. Logs of peat cover 1% of the Earth's surface, but contain 30% of its carbon. It's incredible! So much carbon, in fact, that peat has been used as a key fuel source around the world and has also been known to spontaneously erupt in flames. A plant that spontaneously combusts. No joke! Even the texture of a creeper matches moss. Minecraft creator Notch himself described creepers as having a texture similar to that of dried leaves. So very clearly, if a creeper is indeed made of dry peat, it would match not only some of the core chemical components of gunpowder, but also match the texture that Notch was describing. Color, explosiveness, electrochemical properties, source of gunpowder, and matching texture. The only question that's left unanswered is, why explode? And more importantly, why explode around me? Well, let's think what you have to offer these spores. If the evolved creature's explosion were able to kill you outright, then these spores land on your fresh corpse would have an excellent source of nutrition. Decaying bodies are great nourishment for plants and fungi to grow, or if your butter armor stands up to the blast, you have little creeper spores all on your body, and you can transport them to all other parts of your little Minecraft world, helping spread the creeper thread in much the same way plants spread their seeds in real life. In fact, one biologist studying peat actually wrote, quote, many times when bending over a hammock of peat moss for close closer examination, I felt the explosively discharged capsule lids strike my face, end quote. So perhaps it's not so much cause and effect of you being around that makes the creeper explode, but rather centuries of evolution within this peat moss species to help ensure its survival and expansion. So there you have it, Minecraft's mascot is really a moss monster launching high-speed spores straight at your face. Think about that the next time you snuggle your little green 